Good evening to everyone present here. I am Nikshita. A very warm welcome to to the finance for you event. I'm sure everyone is really excited to get head start for how to manage money, for how to save money, and how to invest and what to do. Before any further ado, let me just introduce the speaker. Our today's speaker is Abdul Kadir. He is a mechanical engineer and he is a founding member of the market field of a fintech startup incubated by Y Combinator. He had been an active investor and trader for past three years and predominantly is an options trader. He has mentored more than 5,000 people in the options trading. I welcome you, sir, and I hand over the session to you. Yes, hi. Hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. Okay. So, thank you. Uh, first of all, would like to thank all of you who have joined the session on a great Saturday evening. So, uh, you have uh, taken this choice of being sitting here for, a, for an hour to learn what finance is or how to manage personal finance. So, as uh, the uh, it started, uh, what I would like to say is, uh, we are not going to discuss anything for the next hour regarding how to manage finance or we will be discussing how to manage finance, but moreover, the first thing that I would like to start is to, uh, is to know why you need to invest or why you need to understand why personal finances or personal finance management is important. Because what I feel is you get a lot of content out there to understand or to uh, understand how to manage finance. But what happens is most of the people do not do that because they do not know uh, or they do not uh, understand the need for doing that. So would like to start with understand uh, to help you understand why you need to manage your personal finance. So I would share my screen just a minute. Just hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Your screen is visible. Okay. So we'll start with, uh, so the topic of my session is how to be financially independent or, uh, I would rather call it as happiness framework. So we'll, I'll discuss what is happiness framework and all that. So before starting, I would like to know, uh, how many of you know what a stock market is or how many of you, uh, understand the need for uh, managing your personal finance. Anybody? I know. Okay. Sanjay says he knows that. Fine. Raj Shekhar has a basic idea of it. Okay. So I'll start with the basics and then we'll move. So, uh, first to give just a brief about my background, I've graduated from Central University of Karnataka in 2022, uh, just three or four months back. And uh, while in college, I was uh, doing a startup called Cryolet and it was a web services company. Currently, it's running passively, but I'm not actively looking into it. And I am I, I am a digital marketing consultant and I do design WordPress websites and I'm a, an active option traders now. So uh, presently, I'm building the world's largest community of financially free individuals. So what we do is I'm the founding member of MarketFeed as uh, mentioned. So what we do is we the mission of our company is to help people make money from capital markets. So it can be from Indian stock market, can be from crypto, anywhere. So that is our mission. and. Uh, currently I'm doing that and to start with, that is the first question that I'm going to ask. Am I financially free to yet uh, free yet to preach this? So I am currently in my journey to become financially free. So financially free in the sense I need not, uh, work for say, I need not work for me to, uh, or fulfill all my wishes or fulfill all my needs. I work or I do whatever I want just because I love it. So that is what I mean by financial freedom or financial independence. So this is what I do, what I love. So what I love is I do love to do business. I do love to, uh, understand how businesses work, help businesses, all that. That is what I love. And, uh, so I do that because, because I do not want to worry about money or I do not want to worry because I need to pay my bills or I need to, uh, worry about, uh, taking care of my needs. So that is what I call as financial freedom. So that is that what we are going to discuss. So first of all, uh, before understanding what uh, the personal importance of personal finance or all that, uh, would like to un uh, you, I would like to tell you the need of what is your ambition or uh, what is it that you need to do. So you see a lot of people out there, even all of us. So I think most of us would be engineers here. And 
all of us are working some of you would be working some of you would be in college or some of you would be preparing for something all that so you all you do all that uh, mostly most people do all that not because they love doing it but because they need they need to get some income source or they need to get some income so that they can live so that becomes the primary purpose instead uh, most people or at least 99% of people is said to uh, don't not to go behind ambitions because ambitions may not get fetch you money so what people do is they look out for uh, the career fields or fields which they get money not the fields that they love so uh, and uh, to understand what is the life's purpose so what happens is most people uh, work for their lifetime because they do not know how to manage finance or they do not know how to manage the money that they get so uh, we always used to say that uh, in our schools colleges they teach you a lot of things and uh, whenever they teach you something uh, what they say is you need to learn all this or you need to uh, do something so that you can get a lot of money and you can live happily but uh, none of the teachers or none of the people who teach you in school or in college do not tell you how to manage your finance or how to do with the money that you get after you become a salaried person or you start doing a business or anything like that so none of you uh, tell them none of the teachers tell them that tell you that uh, what they just tell you is you will get money say you, you if you learn properly or if you do your course properly uh, you will get a good job and after you get a good job you will get enough salary to live happy but no, nobody of uh, or none of them teaches you how to manage money and that is the main important fact to be learned because uh, for example you uh, say i would uh, like to get an example of a car you are given a car but if you don't know how to drive a car what is the purpose of the car so the same case here you are getting a lot of say uh, after you do your course you get a lot of money or you get your salary but you don't know how to manage your money or manage the income that you get then there is no purpose of getting that money or what you would do is you would not uh, use it proper so that is what something i would like to tell you so this is one of the most important or very famous uh, uh, principle that is being discussed so this is called maslow's hierarchy of needs so what i say is uh, everyone everyone works or everyone does anything because of some drive so there is some drive that is uh, making people do what they want so that is how so uh, the drive varies from person to person and what drive varies from person to person so that is why this uh, maslow's hierarchy of needs categorizes all these people into different different categories so first is uh, most people so we all go for work or we all uh, try to get some income all because of the first basic primary need that is the physiological needs so physiological needs include food water rest all that so these are the basic needs so we all work or we all uh, go behind getting some income just because the first primary need is physiological needs because we need food water all the basic needs so that we can live so once the basic need is categorized so most people most people out here or most people uh, belong to this first category wherein they work for their physiological needs and once the physiological needs are done and they are all done and they get enough amount to uh, fulfill their physiological needs they move to the next high level wherein they go for safety needs say they have they need some security safety uh, in their life so that they can live happily so that is a primary need happiness is a primary need uh, everyone needs to be happy and that is why they go work and they do all that so the next case is safety needs uh, you will need safety life security all that and that is where this uh, and the safety needs and psychology needs comes under this basic needs so once the basic needs are satisfied so what happens is you do a course you after that you get a job uh, you start getting your salary and after that maybe in 6 months or 1 year all your basic needs should be done once the basic needs are done then the next uh, next drive that would be is belongingness and love needs that means you would have relationships you would have friends so for all that these are the psychological needs and for esteem needs esteem needs is something but uh, you need social status uh, you need to be known very well in your society uh, in among the among your friends all that so for all that you that is the drive that causes you to do something so you go behind you hustle you do everything just uh, so that you will get this uh social presence or the uh, societal uh belonging so that is the psychological need so once psychological need what happens is most people end up there they they get their basic needs uh, fulfilled and they get their when they get their psychological needs fulfilled everything is done and they stop there but what i say is uh, or at least uh, by the end of this belongingness and love needs most people stop there and that is how they live because uh, after that they don't do anything there is no hustle in them there is no drive in them because they uh, the only need or what they wanted was the basic needs and psychological needs 
but only people are uh, uh, very few of them uh, would jump into the next levels that is the esteem needs and in, in the very next level the highest level called self actualization so what happens is in the esteem needs uh, they want prestige they want social status all that and in the next level it's called self actualization so what happens is in the self esteem level you get all say you want want to work for uh, getting your income or to feel fulfill your needs but you're working so that you would have some social status and in the next level that is called self actualization so that is where a person achieves it uh, his or her full potential because that is where self fulfillment comes into picture till now you were working on the drive of so or uh, you were working for your basic needs or psychological needs and you are not working for your inner happiness only when you reach this st the stage of self actualization actualization that is when uh, you feel that you need to do something every day when you go go goes to sleep every day you would feel that today i did not do my best i need to become the best person or i need to excel in my field all that comes when you have the self actualization insight and that is what a person needs and uh, to reach the self actualization level you should make sure that your finance uh, your uh, personal finances all managed all done very well okay i hope uh, you are clear with all this okay so next you need to know uh, you need to understand if uh, all these are aligned so uh, as i said before 99% of people do not do things that they do love i might be working because not because i love the love the work that i do but because i need to work so that i need to get my salary and i need to get my needs done nothing more than that and most people you ask anybody anybody they would say that they are working because they, they do not love the work but because uh, they are helpless uh, they uh, they need to work somewhere so that they can man they can move on their life so that is a that, that is why 99% of people do not do things that they love and they are not happy you ask anybody if are you happy most people would say that i am not fully happy uh, that is because they are not financially independent so that is where i come to the the concept of financial independence so what happens is uh, say there are people uh, you, there would be people having this category and uh, who would like to just simply go uh, explore the world they would want to go to each country each and every country they would want to uh, go to different different places but they they are not able to do that because they do not have in a in a finances to manage or they are not financially independent they are uh, locked somewhere so that uh, or they are locked uh, since they do not have the finances or the enough uh, income streams to help them and uh, that is where the alignment should come and you should make sure that you should always reach or you should always uh, go to a step or you should be aiming at a step wherein you are financially free financially free in the sense you should have the time you should have time or uh, time is something that uh, people do want a lot because we work because we do not have enough time or we do not uh, have enough money so that alignment is something that is required so for that alignment these are my answers for that alignment so what i say is the purpose of life you need uh, the purpose of life is two things one is happiness and one is fulfillment okay so you need to be happy and you need to be fulfilled only when you are happy or uh, only when you are happy you would become contented so what i say is the purpose of life is not to make money money is just a basic necessity that is what so money is just a basic necessity because you need money to live this life and that is how the world is get world is uh, framed so you need money to be happy but money is not your basic uh, money is not your ultimate aim it should not be your ultimate aim your ultimate aim should be happiness so each person would love to do something uh, that is where i would like to quote the, quote the example of uh, there are people who would like to uh, become an actor but they do not they won't pursue that field because they know that it's a lot of hard work a strain and even at the end you might not become successful there and moreover in the pursuit of becoming an actor or in the pursuit of doing that you would not have enough money to uh, manage your life manage uh, all that and that is where that is why people go into any stream which they get money so always make sure that your life's purpose is happiness uh, and fulfillment and for that you need your basic necessity and that is money so uh, uh, something that i would like to say that say there is uh money is not say money won't make you happy mostly what happens is uh if you have money you you won't say that you would be happy happiness is uh, a bit different from that but if you do not have money that can make you unhappy okay so uh, money can't make you happy but if you do not have money you would become unhappy you, there are chances that you would become unhappy so my ambition is uh, or my ambition is uh, or something like what i like to do is to build my own successful brand so i uh, the purpose of my life or what i feel is i would like to become a businessman or i would like to uh, do some business and that is what gives me happiness 
okay and that is why i'm pursuing all this i i started doing a lot of businesses uh, while i was in college while i was in school all that so i did all that because uh, happiness or fulfillment was given or i got all my happiness and fulfillment from doing business so that is why i did that uh, so that is my ambition but uh, even though i had this amb- ambition i have uh, this conflict say being an entrepreneur is a highly risky job uh, you ask your parents uh, or you tell your parents that you want to become an entrepreneur even my parents said that uh, it's risky there is no safety there is there is no security uh, it's highly risky there is no guarantee that you can win in your life or there is no guarantee that you would become a successful entrepreneur all that because most entrepreneurs even in the case of startups it says it is said that 90% of startups fail and most businesses also fail only very few businesses win and we see only businesses that have won uh, we do not look into the business that have won, uh, uh, that have failed so business or doing being, being an entrepreneur is a highly uh, it's not a very uh, safe thing or a safe job so it's highly risky because as i said there is no financial guarantee there is no job security uh, you can go bankrupt any time because you are risking your whole life there you are risking a lot of money there so there is a lot of risk involved there but it's still i would like to say if, uh, that is something that gives me happiness and that is something that gives me fulfillment so uh, i would want to do that because that is uh, my ultimate aim. but also parallelly i should be able to manage my finances i should not be broke any time or i should not be uh, worried so uh, if i want to do something that gives me happiness i should be always be content or i should be uh, i should not be worried about uh, worried about my finances i should always be happy so for that that is where this uh, this happiness framework comes in so this is uh, the happiness framework or the framework uh, which everybody says so uh, in my case what is uh, what is it is that i have this active uh, active thing called entrepreneurship i go behind doing business i go, go behind uh, starting new business like finding out ideas where i can uh, get new business all that and that is my conscious uh, choice for life's happiness so i get happy only because only when i do business so i won't get happy when i work somewhere or uh, i don't get happy when i uh, go for working uh, go working somewhere or uh, go behind anything else i i am happy only when i do something do some business or something so that is my active thing but passively to manage so to as i said uh, money should be your basic necessity and for doing getting that basic necessity i always manage my finance so that is my passive setup so that is where the, or that what is that is what is called uh, financial freedom so you have the freedom of doing what you want you can do anything what you want and you have something uh, so you have a passive source wherein uh, which would help you manage all your finance you don't need to worry about uh, getting your uh, monthly income or to uh, getting uh, an income source to or uh, you don't want to work somewhere to get your monthly bills paid so uh, that is how the framework works the happiness framework and for that framework uh, you have a lot of solutions and uh, i would like to give you a solution roadmap so uh, instead of simply saying that you need to be happy but uh, to be happy or you need to be happy or fulfilled you need to go behind all your uh, uh, say you want to go be behind something that gives you happiness uh, without uh, say or without looking into your finances that is uh, it's not it's not correct so that is where i would like to give this solution roadmap so this is where uh, the whole thing starts so that is where you have three steps to become uh, you can become financially free and also you can go running behind your dreams so for that the first step is to get a capital everywhere so uh, the first step is uh, to get capital you need money uh, so that is also something that we need to say is money brings money makes money without money you can't make money and you need money to make money so uh, the first step is to get capital for getting capital you can go work somewhere uh, you can work for someone or you can do something what you want you can do a business all that so when you do that maybe you start working at the age of 23 or 24 or 22 wherever and after that you can work for maybe 5 years or 10 years and raise up uh, an amount of capital so that you can be happy or make sure that you uh, make enough capital so that you can live the rest of the life happy you don't need to worry about your finances so there are different steps for that uh, you have something uh, say there are different steps wherein you can uh, get your capital and also just getting capital is not enough you should always make sure that your capital is uh, growing correctly or your capital is managed well so once you get your uh, once you get enough capital what you can do is uh, make sure that capital or that m money works for your financial freedom dream so you should make sure that the capital that you uh, have uh, accu- uh, accumulated in the last 5 years or 10 years is properly invested or is properly kept somewhere wherein uh, the the money works for you and you get your money back and once you reach that stage 
you work for yourself and do whatever you love and for all your needs uh, the capital that you have generated would pay you back okay so that is kind of a solution roadmap so the first step is where uh, you need to generate some capital and for that capital you can work somewhere you can do some business you can do anything uh, get some capital accumulate capital and once you have accumulated capital make sure that you uh, put the capital somewhere uh, you invest the capital in some asset class i would be explaining that the, all this all those different asset classes you uh, invest those money into some different asset classes and uh, though the capital the money would work for you and give you back the, the amount that you need to live for the rest of your life and after that, uh, once you have reached that stage of financial uh, independence or financial freedom, you can work for uh, or you go behind uh, something that you love. You can work for something that you love. So these are the different investment options. So uh, when it comes to investments, uh, it is divided into four different classes. The first class is a fixed income system. Uh, then there is stock market. Then there is real estate. And then there is commodity. Okay. So these are the four main classes, uh, four main investment classes. So uh, mostly, mostly, most of the people out here would be in the, uh, would be investing your money in the first class, that is fixed income. So something that we call FDs. So most of our parents used to say that when you start, uh, when you start getting some money or when you start making money, you start getting your salary. You should put your money or you should save your money. But none of them tell you how to save money. Or if you ask how should I save money, the only only solution or the only option that they would say is put your money in an FD in a fixed deposit. You go to your bank, you have your bank account and even the bank person would say that if you have excess money, you put the money into FD. And that is something called a fixed income. You get uh, a fixed amount of uh, interest every every year and you can use that and your money would grow. But the fun fact there is in India, India is a growing country and India, uh, every uh, in every place there is something called inflation. So I don't know how much uh, or uh, how many of you know what inflation is and uh, I would like to explain everything to the base so that uh, none of you would get uh, uh get worried about all the jargons that i say so there is something called inflation inflation is nothing but uh the cost of things if uh, it increases every year so what happens is you go buy milk every day and the cost of milk might be 20 rupees or 22 rupees now it uh, and what happens is next year it increases 23 the next year it increases to 25 then to 30 35 and it goes on so Everything or, or the cost of commodities, cost of anything that you buy or the cost of anything that, it, you, the, that you need to buy increases every year. And that is something called inflation. So when it comes to India, the inflation rate in, rate in India is nearly 7.5%. That means every year the cost of something would, uh, in average, would increase by nearly 7.5%. So uh, there is a different meaning to that also. What happens is if you have 100 rupees with you now, the next year this 100 rupees would become 93 rupees. Okay. So the value of that decreases day by day. And if you want to see how it works, uh, say we always compare the value of uh, any rupee or uh, say uh, we compare the value of any currency to US dollar. So every year, if you uh, check the last 10 years uh, comparison between US dollar and Indian rupee, uh, maybe 10 years back, Indian rupee was nearly, I think nearly roughly near 45 rupees. And now it is near 80 rupees. That means uh, Indian rupee had a value of say uh, one dollar was uh, near, had a value of nearly 45 Indian rupees 10 years back now it is valued at 80 rupees that means the value of Indian rupee has gone down so every day or every uh, every day the value of rupee is going down it's not going up so it's going up that means the money that you have if you have 100 rupees now the value of that is getting decreased every day so when you put your money into FD you put your know, money to FD and the standard interest rates in all these banks currently is just six percent so I'm not going in, into the detail of <coughs> into the detail of uh, how the interest rate works and how the uh, would interest rates increase or decrease all that. Just the average interest rates across uh, banks is six percent. So uh, when you put your money into bank, you put hundred rupees. You the next year you, it would be increased to one zero six rupees. But what happens is the one zero six uh, rupees is there, but still the inflation rate every year is seven point five percent. That means the value decreases 7.5% every year. So effectively you are just, you are losing 1.5% every year. Say you get 6% but you lose 7.5% because of inflation. So effectively you are get, just getting 1.5% out of, uh, or you are losing 1.5% every year when you put your money into FDs. But still uh, your parents or whoever you ask would say that FD is the best investment out there. You should put your put all your money into FDs and that is the safest investment asset there. So I would I would say that FD is a safe as safe investment option, but that is not uh, or that is not the only option that you have out there. So that is the first option, the fixed income schemes wherein you have FDs offered by banks 
or you have something called bonds bonds is nothing but uh, you give your money for someone as a loan and they give you back uh, or they pay you back the interest as well and you get that interest and that is your profit so there is something called bonds and even government would uh, you can even uh, give money to government and in return government would pay you interest so you can do all that and the returns are up to 7% not uh, or not all fixed interest or or not all uh, fixed income stream streams have 7% uh, it varies from 4 to 7% or it varies from 3 to 7% so these are all fixed income streams uh, you get between anywhere between uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, so Ankur Varik is smirking even because uh, all what I say or all what I say is something that is all explained out there by all the finance YouTubers out there. Even uh, we are all, uh, we do exp explain everything out of finance. I would come to that. So uh, you would you would get some smell of something or some essence of uh, all that out there because it's it's all common. But what happens is it's say currently we have nearly maybe 60 people or 70 people out there. Uh, and you have nearly thousands of people in ITP, but still, uh, mostly most people are not interested into this field, or most people uh, are not 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 willing to learn all this. They just need to enjoy their life, or what they feel is uh, they can. They just need to enjoy their life, and the they, the only thing that they need to do is get your salary or get your in, uh, income, put it into your bank account, and that's it. You can sp spend whatever is required, or keep keep the rest as savings there. But what happens is every year the money that they uh, they have put as savings is getting reduced. So uh, what happens is you see a most uh, you see a lot of people out there. Uh, they do work for 30 years, 33 years, and 35 years, and at the end they do not have enough money to sustain for the rest of life. Say you won't be working for uh, the whole of your life, or none of us would be interested in working uh, lifelong to get your needs done. But uh, you need to make sure that you do all this. So uh, coming back, uh, this is fixed income scheme. You would get three to seven percent. And I am not uh, say we do all say that you not you should not put all your money into or you should not put your money at all in fixed income. So there, what uh, the first thing before investing is something called emergency fund. I think uh, some of you might have heard about what emergency fund is. So that is nothing but you should always keep uh, some amount of money. Usually it's just six months of your salary or uh, five months of salary. Salary uh, it should be kept aside so that even if you lose your job, you should uh, be able to leave for the next six months or you should be able to uh, make sure that you have enough amount to leave for the next six months and you can find a new job. So you can put all your emergency fund into fixed income. You because uh, what happens is it should always be it should, it should stay intact. So that is the first option. The second option is uh, the famous option stock market. So what happens is uh, when we when I say that uh, you can invest your money into stock market, most people feel that it's a place where you bet your money or uh, it's a place where you gamble. Say it's like going to a casino, putting your money. Uh, if you're lucky, you get your money back. Otherwise, you lose your money. So stock market is uh, not a place like that. So when I want to introduce, or this is something that you might not have heard any anywhere. Uh, so if you ask your uh, your parents or your grandparents or any of your uh, relatives, what they would say is, stock market is a risky place. So uh, you can ask one question back to them. Uh, they would all say that you can invest your money into FTS, and that is a safe option. Fine, the safest option out there. So where are you going to invest all your FTS? There, you would be investing it into an SBI, or you you would. Uh, Okay, so uh, you would be putting your money into FDs in NSBI, State Bank of India, which is uh, India's largest bank. So what happens is, and people say that SBI is the safest bank out there because it's backed by government, it's a government bank. Uh, if SBI falls, that means the government would fall. So it's a safe option that you would not lose your money and all that. So you put your, put your money into SBI. So if you are so confident that SBI won't fall and you would not lose your money, why don't you invest in SBI? You become a shareholder into SBI. So you get better returns out there. What uh, I would like to show that, uh, okay. So this is uh, this is a chart of how uh, the prices of SBI, SBI share price. So what you can do is instead of investing into or in, instead of putting your money into FD in SBI, what you can do is you can just uh, if you had put maybe in 2020, two years back, if you had put uh, some money into SBI, maybe just 200 rupees. So let's start with that. So the current uh, the uh, SBI share was trading. So I think uh, okay. We'll start. So SBI shares shares were trading at nearly 191 rupees or 190 rupees in 2020. So at that time, if you had put your money or if you have put uh, 200 rupees into FD in SBI, you would have got nearly maybe 12 rupees in two years. So those 200 rupees would become 212 rupees. 
At the same time, if you are so confident that uh, SBI won't fall, the company is so, uh, so stable, uh, the company won't fail at any time. And if you had invested the same money into SBI, uh, uh, into SBI share, that 200 rupees, rupees would now be equivalent to 514 rupees. That means almost double the amount. So uh, 200 is just for a representation. If you had invested 200, it would become 500. The same thing, or uh, if you had invested in SBA maybe in 2008 or in 2010, it was just 112 or 110, anywhere near that. And now it's five times that. That means uh, if you had put that money into FD, in, within 10 years, you uh, the amount would have just a bit doubled. So it would have become the 200 rupees would have become, or if you had put 100 rupees, that 100 rupees would have become 200 rupees. But at the same time, if you're so confident that SBA would win, you could have put uh, the money into SBA shares and it would become nearly six times. It would be, have become 600 rupees. So there are a lot of examples like that, and you can put your money into stock market. But the main point that you need to make sure is that when you're putting your money into stock market, always make sure that you should be putting it in long term. Uh, you should not put your money for, uh, or you should not put any amount that you need to get back in three months, or some, any amount that you need back in three months, or six months, or one year. Because there are chances that it can go uh, there, you can get negative returns. Because it's all connected to market, there are a lot of factors depending on uh, uh, how your investment would grow or not. So it's just like investing your, say, uh, maybe your friend would start uh, would be starting to start a cafe. So especially in Bangalore, uh, cafes are very famous and a lot of people start cafes. So maybe one of your friends was going to start a cafe and he says that he needs capital because he doesn't have enough capital to start a cafe. And he says that, can you invest in my business so that when I start getting profits, I would pay you back. It's the same logic that works here. Uh, if you uh, companies are working out there, so there are a lot of big companies and small companies working out there, and they say that they need capital so that they can expand their business. So to expand their business, they ask for capital for from all uh, all these common people like us. And what we do is we invest that money to those companies. So what happens is uh, if the company performs well, you get your appreciation, and if the company doesn't perform well, you lose your money or you uh, get negative returns from your company. So you can invest in the stock market and you can get returns anywhere between 14 to 20%. Bare minimum. Bare minimum 14 to 20%. As I said, in the long term, you can get, you can maybe, uh, the standard uh, term that we say is, in maybe 10 years, you can uh, uh, the, you can increase your money thrice. That means if you had put 1000 rupees, it would have become 3000 rupees. So that is how stock market works. So in that, uh, it's not like just putting your money into FDs. Uh, you will have to invest your time. You will have to put a lot of hard work. Or, or otherwise, what you can do is, uh, if you want to get the benefits of stock market, you can invest in something called mutual funds. So mutual funds are something, nothing but you put your money or you give your money to a mutual fund or a fund manager and he manages your money and he invests those money into different fund stocks. He uh, researches different stocks. He understands how stocks work. And then uh, he puts your money into all these different stocks and you get your, uh, you get the profit that he makes back. So this is the next option, the stock market. And then there is the next option called real estate. Uh, you can invest your money into commercial properties. You can uh, buy, uh, uh, say, you can buy homes, you can buy flats, uh, you can buy villas, all that. So this is something called real estate. Even in real estate, instead of buying homes, it's always better that you go for commercial properties or properties that would give back income, income every month. So uh, maybe none of us would have enough capital to uh, put a lot of money or uh, that much of capital to put your money into real estate. But instead, what you can do is there is something called REITs. So it's uh, similar to what is mutual funds. So I don't know uh, if you're understanding everything because uh, covering everything or covering this vast field of investment options in one hour is, uh, it's a bit tough job. So I would uh, I would try my maximum to make sure that you understand most of it or to make sure that you have a spark inside you so that uh, you, get, you understand the value of uh, managing money or you understand the value of exploring different investment options and so that you can you can grow your wealth better than putting your money into FDs. So uh, you, you start going watching, uh, you start watching the videos of Ankur Variku or Akshat Srivastava or any such YouTubers or you start uh, reading some books. So the next option is real estate, you can put money into real estate, all that. And the last option is commodity. So you can put, put your money into gold, silver, all that. So commodities uh, usually give you an approximate returns of nearly 8%. But it's not, uh, it's kind of a safe, safe heaven. You, we say that gold is the safest heaven out there, but it's not the gold ornaments that you buy. When you want to buy gold for gold or silver for investment, always make sure that you buy gold as gold, not gold as investment, yeah, gold as, or gold as ornaments. Ornaments won't give you the returns that you intend and it always gives you negative returns only. Always make sure that you buy gold as gold itself.
okay so you can either buy gold as uh, digital gold you can buy physical gold or you can either invest into exchange traded funds or uh, something called etfs so etfs are available all that so these are the different uh, investment options out there is gold bonds uh, as commodity or if it's okay uh, is gold bonds as commodity or is it some other kind of asset? No, gold bonds are nothing but you put your money, you give your money and what they do is they put your, uh, they buy equivalent amount of gold and after that they use that, use your amount for anything else and they give you back an interest also. So uh, an example that I can say is SDB, sovereign gold bond. So what happens is RBI, Reserve Bank of India would issue something called sovereign gold bonds. So what they do is uh, we can invest anywhere between, anywhere in the multiples of 5,000 rupees. So you can just invest, uh, start from 5,000 rupees, you invest 5,000 rupees. What they do is they buy gold equivalent to 5,000 rupees and then uh, they keep it safe uh, in the, in RBI's locker and then they use that or uh, they take that money for or take they uh, take that amount for all their uh, needs and they also give you 2.5% interest rate every year. And after five years, you get your uh, capital back plus 2.5% interest every year plus the appreciation of gold. So there are a lot of such uh, investment options or investment avenues out there and before finding out or before going into investment options always understand the risks involved in it what are the different options and always make sure that you diversify your investments say don't put all your money to FD don't put all your money to stock market uh, into real estate commodities you should always diversify your amount so that what happens is even if you get some uh, losses in one one uh, one investment option you get some returns in the other investment options and all always your portfolio is balanced Okay, and then how to say, we said it before that uh, you should get your capital. So that is through, you can work somewhere or you can do something and you can get your capital. After you get your capital, you can make money work for you so that you can achieve financial freedom. So to help you or to make sure that you, uh, the money that works for you better, the best option that out there is stock market. So I don't know how well you know stock markets. You can, uh, you can understand or you can learn about stock markets free of course out of YouTube. I will show you that also. So uh, you can, the best option out there is stock market wherein you can go, you can put your money. I, either you can put it passively or else you can put your money actively. Any option is possible. So either passively you can invest into mutual funds or else you can actively look into or you can actively invest into stocks, different, different stocks and you can make money. So what happens is, uh, as I said before, you are, uh, when you put or when you invest money into stock market or when you invest your money into any stock, what happens is you are investing it in the company. So when the company starts making profit, they give back a certain percentage of profit as dividends. So you always get a fixed amount of income every month or every quarter because you have invested in that company. The best example is, uh, say you can say ITC. So ITC is one of the largest companies out there. Uh, it's called the full form of ITC is Indian Tobacco Company. So most of the cigarettes sold in India are from ITC and you know that uh, most of the people here smokes and they do have a lot of other businesses. They have ITC hotels, they have uh, the, all this uh, FMCG, that means fast moving consumer goods, biscuits, uh, all that. And they have a wide variety of products. So what they do is they, each quarter when they make a certain amount of profits, they give a certain, they or they distribute this profits among their shareholders. So if you go invest into ITC, uh, what you can get is every year you get nearly 10% of uh, the, their profit share as a dividend. So that is how the, this becomes, say you, uh, it becomes like you invest into a company or invest into a business and the business pays you back. So you can use that money to make sure that uh, money makes money for you. And the last uh, I would like to show is always make sure that you invest a certain percentage of amount every month. Say, uh, even if you are getting just 10,000 rupees of income every month or 20,000 rupees of income every month, make sure that you invest at least 30% or 40% into some asset class. So uh, I would recommend that uh, you should invest at least 30% for the long term, long term in the sense for five years or 10 years, etc. So uh, I would like to show you the magic of how this compounding works. Compounding is nothing but you invest uh, small, small amounts every month and it compounds, compounds to a large amount. So what happens is my income is maybe 10,000 rupees a month, just 10,000 rupees. And I invest 2000 rupees uh, every month for to some mutual fund or to some uh, stock or to some asset class. So I invest maybe 2000 rupees, just 2000 rupees. I guess uh, every one of us here would be able to invest 2000 rupees. So I'm just investing 2000 rupees and I'm investing that into an asset class. So it can be either into uh, stocks, stock market, it can be either into mutual funds, anywhere. So usually stock market uh, gives you a returns of nearly 15% every year on an average. 
not uh, the next year or the next year. If you invest for 10 years, uh, you would be getting an average return of 15% uh, on the next 10 years. So you get this 10 years and you invest it for the next 30 years. Say I am currently 23 and I invest it for maybe my uh, th the next 30 years. That is still my 53 years. So at the time of, uh, or uh, by the time I become 53, I would have a corpus of nearly 1 crore 40 lakhs 19,641. Uh, so which is a huge amount. Uh, so what happens is you are just putting 2000 out there and you won't even understand or you won't even know that you're putting investing 2000 rupees and you are getting a very large amount of sum out there when you are almost getting retired. So like this, there are a lot of options av av available out there. So that is, uh, I want, I'm not going detail into all these options there. What you can do is we'll go for a Q&A session. You can ask all your doubts and, uh, in between the doubts, I will clear all the, uh, or, or I will explain all the different options out there. And moreover, if you are interested into learning how stock market works, uh, you can go to a YouTube channel. So we have a YouTube channel, which is called Market Feed. Yes. So this is the YouTube channel. So here you have this uh, free playlist wherein you can learn everything about stock markets. So it, this might give you a better explanation than what I have given you now. You can learn anything from the basics of stock market, even if you don't, any, don't know anything about stock market, you can start learning uh, everything about stock market and uh, you can be a better investor. Okay, so I would want, uh, uh, say I would like people to get unmuted so that you can ask all your doubts. Okay, so Bharat is asking, can you just brief about options trading? Okay, so to give a brief about options trading or to uh, make you understand how options trading works, I would give you a simple example. So what I do is, uh, for example, I am a person doing, uh, say I am a wholesaler or I, what I do is I am, uh, I am selling uh, steel. So I'm a steel distributor and what I do is I collect steel and I sell it to different people. So what I do is the current price of steel is 100 rupees. Currently the steel prices for one, t one ton of steel is 100 rupees. Let's say example. And I, uh, since I am an intelligent person, what I do is I uh, follow the news all news relating to steel stocks or uh, not steel stocks i watch or follow all the news related to steel to steel so what happens is i come to know that uh, the next month the prices of steel can uh, increase maybe currently it's 100 rupees the next month it can increase to maybe 110 rupees or 120 rupees because of certain reasons reasons can be because of inflation uh, or because of uh, any other concerns this price of steel can increase so when i come to uh, what i do is i analyze the price of steel or i, I analyze the factors uh, affecting the prices of steel and what I do is uh, I understand that there are chances that there are high chances that the next month the price of steel can increase from 100 rupees to 120 rupees or 110 rupees. So what I do is I go I go to my supplier or the person who supplies me steel and then I tell him that I am ready to I am ready to buy steel for 100 rupees uh, next month itself and I am ready to give you an advance. And what I do is I give him a token amount like how you invest in real estate. I tell him that I am ready to give you certain token amount and I would buy steel from you the next month. Say I would buy it maybe in the next month, uh, last day. Say currently it's September. I would say that I would buy it at the end of October. So uh, and uh, we agree saying that I am ready to buy it for 100 rupees and I would be buying it for the next month. So the benefit there is that when I say that I am buying it for 100 rupees, my analysis is uh, the price of steel would be increased to 110. And even if it increases to 110, since I have a contract and I have an agreement between the supplier, I would get it at 100 rupees itself next month. So I can save 10 rupees. Uh, per ton out of them. So that is how options work, wherein uh, we become or we uh, go and have contracts with each people out there and uh, based on the analysis. So if we have analysis saying that the prices of something would go up or go down, anything, anywhere, uh, even if, uh, if we feel that it goes up or goes down, what we do is we go uh, have a contract with a person out there and we say that I am ready to buy it for this price at this day and we'll fix a contract. So what happens is, uh, if uh, say for example, as I said before, if the price of steel increases, I would be in profit. But what if the price of steel decreases? It goes down to 90 rupees. My analysis has failed, and uh, it increase it decreases from 100 to 90. I would be at close because I would have to anyway buy it from him for 100 rupees. But uh, the current price is just 90, and I would have to buy it for a 10 percent, 10 rupees premium. So that is uh, the overall idea of how options trading works, and it is a very big uh, or a very vast area. I won't be able to explain it in five minutes. Uh, next is what's your opinion on Adani group valuations? So uh, Rohit, you have asked the, uh, the question at the best time wherein Adani, Gautam Adani is now the second richest person out there. Uh, he is just behind Elon Musk. 
so what happens is the valuations are a bit uh there are a lot of conspiracy theories going out there that uh, he's pumping out stocks and uh, stock prices and he's manipulating the stock prices but i'm not going all that there uh, my opinion there is not to invest into adani stocks currently uh, or if you are planning to invest into adani stocks make sure that you put a very small amount or an amount which uh, which you feel that even if you lose that amount you won't be uh, or you won't have any issues only put such an amount there otherwise i won't suggest you to put invest money into adani stocks currently and sanjeev says sir uh, parents say we should uh, we should not know or invest money during graduation and while you are studying as it is addictive uh, is it true and very bad to invest while we still doing engineering or we can do well okay so addiction so what happens is uh, the same parents would say that you should learn because you need to start earning money so you can earn money in different ways so uh, what i said before you can go into stock market or you can go into invest your, you can invest your money actively as well as passively so if you feel that you should always find uh, or you should always understand what is the best place uh, or the, what is the best field that you would be happy so if you are happy say i am a person who uh, gets happiness when i do trading that is why i am a trader or i do trading so uh, there are people who doesn't like trading even if you like trading or, or even even if you don't like stock market or even if you don't like uh, managing personal finance or not you should always do it either actively or passively if you don't if you like it you can do it actively if you don't like it you can do it passively so sanjay you should find it yourself uh, you should you should understand it yourself if you feel that uh, that uh, you won't like finance or you like to trade you like to invest or you like to understand how businesses work uh, or you like to research on how business works you can go behind uh, investment investing money or uh, finding out different such investment avenues otherwise what you can do is focus on your studies do it all passively just put your money out there in some mutual funds some etfs uh, or such any such passive in- income streams and then don't even look out there so what you can do is you can focus on your studies you can put your money out there anyway should you should invest your money but you can do it passively uh daksha is asking adani is actually using an interlinked strategy of debt strategy which is interesting if you yes uh so adani strategy strategy is something that um, it's it would take a lot of time to explain i think there are a lot of youtube videos out there which explains uh, how adani has become so overvalued or how gaudam adani became the richest person in such a short period of time so you can follow such videos and you would be able to understand okay uh how to choose right stocks at right time okay so uh if you want to choose right stocks what you can do is first you can go for fundamental analysis say uh, i told you the example that your friend is going to start a cafe and you you uh, he is asking to invest money so at that time what you would be doing is you would check his business you would go, you would check if his business is going to win so there would be a lot of factors that you would be taking considering uh, when you uh, evaluate that so you would be che- checking if he is capable of doing the business uh, then you would be checking if this business is uh, it uh, would it be would it be a success in that place that point of time say in the case of cafe uh you would be checking if cafes would work at the place he is going to start uh you would be checking if the chefs or the people who he is hiring is of high standard so that they would be able to manage the business well so you would be checking all that so like that uh, when it comes to these stocks there is something called fundamental analysis so this is a, a website where you can uh choose or you can understand how to choose the right stocks this is called ticker tape so here you can enter any stock for example reliance so uh, we all say that ambani ambani would uh, is the best person out there and he would always make money so if you think that ambani makes money or he would make money always why don't you invest with ambani you uh, say ambani is also ambani is help uh, developing a this uh, or ambani is uh, always behind uh, developing lines so what you can do is you can just go invest into lines and it's like uh, when ambani grows you are also growing passively so you can check this site uh, so in this site you can come you can check for all these stocks uh the it, it would show you what is their financials how much profits or losses are they making every year every month all that uh so like that you can do a fundamental analysis otherwise you can also do something called technical analysis wherein you go look the charts of each stock you understand the technicals all that and you can start investing into stocks and for investing we need to do some research right so how do you think we can do research when we invest passively so when you invest passively uh, the research that you can do is there are a lot of uh, methods possible one is you don't need to do any research there are a lot of uh, options out there where you, where you don't need to do any investment and they would give you uh, or they would help you make money one is the option that i said mutual funds mutual funds is the first option otherwise there is an, another option called small case so 
small case is nothing but uh, there is something called mutual fund manager or there is something called hedge fund manager so what they do is uh, they take or they collect money from you and they look out they do this the same research that i told you before that you need to do they go behind uh, they check all the backgrounds of each stocks and they invest into stocks with your money and then they give you uh, give you returns and then they take a certain percentage commission so uh, for doing all these services so you can uh, look out for a small case or you can look out for mutual funds all that then which parameters would you suggest to filter stocks so to filter stocks there are a lot of parameters uh, uh, say the one parameter can be technical sphere and you can uh, check if this it is the stock is breaking out uh, or you can check the charts and understand if there is a potential possibility there otherwise you can go fundamentally and you can uh, understand how the business works so that is also something uh, very personal some people would like to or would love to go behind uh, studying how businesses work uh, to me to understand how if this business would work or not all that so you can go behind all that you can check uh, if the business has a moat moat is nothing but uh, is it the best business out there say uh, when it comes to telecom we know that uh, jio jio is the uh, the best company out there you have just three players now jio airtel and vodafone idea so in these three companies we always know that jio is the market leader and we have a feeling that jio would win so that is where we say that jio has a moat in this field so like that you can uh, look out for stocks which has a moat other other example is pidelight pidelight uh, we all must be using something called fevicol uh, so fevicol is the best brand out there or the best product out there for uh, adhesives and that uh, so uh, that is why we say that pidelight has a moat moat in the field so you can look for stocks that has moat you can look for stocks that are growing every year say you can check out the, their financials and you can understand that if a stock is growing 15% or 10% and it is growing considerably every year you can invest in that stock you uh, you would anyway make money so there are all such options there and what are the best apps to invest in stocks so one is what i said uh, like small case small case is one option otherwise you can invest in the mutual funds then to invest the money you have something called a broker so it can be zeroda it can be upstocks and there are a lot of uh, brokers out there you can go there you can check out for uh, you can search these stocks and you can buy stocks then when is the best time to start investing and for students and mutual funds good ones to start with okay so if you don't know which mutual fund to select there are nearly 2000 invest, uh, mutual fund schemes out there and you would get confused on which mutual fund to select which stock to invest all that so if you have such a doubt all that you can do is uh, go search for nifty bees so uh, all what you can do is this is called nifty bees so nifty bees is nothing but we have uh, something called nifty in uh, stock market so nifty is nothing but the index of the top 50 stocks so in india you have nearly uh, 2000 plus listed companies so in those 2000 companies you have the top 50 companies those top 50 companies would include reliance sbi infosys tcs uh, wipro icic bank example example etc etc lot of such companies maruti all that so you know that all these companies would not fail at any time because they are such strong stocks they have such strong background all that but you won't have money to invest in all such stocks together so what you can do is just simple method this is the best option this, this is the capsule that i can give you uh, in investment if you don't know anything about investing or you, you want to you don't want to know anything about investment just go search for nifty bees open an account uh, open a dmat account under any broker go search for nifty bees you would get this nippon india or any nifty bees uh, it would cost nearly 192 rupees for one one unit of nifty bees invest in that so what happens is when you invest this 192 rupees uh, into nifty bees this 192 rupees would get invested into the top 50 companies out there and for the past 40 years if you had invested this uh, amount or if you are invested into nifty bees for the past 40 years you would have got a returns of nearly 13.5 percent every year your fd would only generate you give you six percent returns uh, and if you invest in bonds it would just give you 10 percent returns if you are invested in mutual funds you would get somewhere between 12 to 15 percent you just you don't need to know about anything you don't need to go behind mutual funds stocks or anything just go invest into mutual uh, this nifty bees you would get nearly 13.5 percent and as i said inflation in india is just 7.5 percent if you get an average of 13 percent still you are making six percent increase every year that means uh, even if inflation is considered consider you can you will be doubling your amount in maybe uh, six into seven uh, say 12 years in 12 years you would be doubling your amount that means if you want to uh, have some goals or doing something you would double your amount in 12 years including inflation otherwise you would double in three years or four years if you consider inflation also you can double it in uh, 12 years 
so this is the only capsule that i can give you uh, if you want if you ask me i don't know investment i don't know about stock market i don't know about anything what should i do you just go to go open an emat account uh, select search for nifty biz invest it every month it's just 192 rupees uh, it would just uh, cost you the co- uh, the amount of buying a pizza uh, go invest every month uh, however much however percentage that you want say it is you can buy it in multiples of 192 rupees so uh, invest 4000 rupees 2000 rupees or any amount that you would feel that you can invest and do that that's the best option uh, bharat is asking is the worth to buy penny stocks if company performance is good so i would not suggest to uh, invest in penny stocks because it is penny stock because uh, the company is not performing well if the per- company was performing well it would have been a great stock for example idea idea if it was a great stock it would not be at the cost of 9 rupees 20 20 uh, 9.2 rupees so only because that the performance of the company is bad it is now at this stock price so i won't suggest investing into penny stocks so if you want to invest uh, you can invest like putting your money into a lottery or putting into your money for gambling nothing more than that and what is the wise way to choose mutual funds so kunal that is why uh, if you uh, either you can go for this nifty bees or if you want to go for mutual funds itself what you can do is you can invest in uh, any large cap mutual fund that means the same thing the mutual funds that invest your money into all these top 50 companies or top 100 companies that is the best option then should students go with option buying or selling as we can't be looking to charts frequently exactly uh, as a student i would not suggest you to uh, go running behind option buying or option selling because what happens is uh, this is option buying or option selling or option trading in general is something uh, is for people who have the time to invest in market or who have time to ma- uh, look into market manage markets so it's okay for beginners to invest on ethereum crypto so when it comes to crypto crypto uh, is kind of a new thing say in 2000s how uh, ww or how internet was it's the same as how crypto is currently so we don't know it might win in the future it might lose in the future so only put or only invest the amount that you uh, even if you lose that amount you won't be you won't have any regret or you won't have any issues so put only such amount wherein you even if you lose the amount you won't be sad so only put such an amount there uh, is nifty be like an index ETF exactly so when you put your money into nifty bees it's like putting your money into top 50 companies and should be intraday or hold these stocks so uh, it's always better that you hold the stocks if you are a student and intraday trading or uh, so to explain what intraday trading is you buy a stock you sell it in the same day that's called intraday trading so uh, to do intraday trading or to become an intraday trader you need a lot of hell lot of skills uh, it's not an easy job to become an intraday trader if then people uh, every, everyone in this world would have made a lot of money so to become an intraday trader you need a lot of skill to become an option buyer or an option seller you need some skill say to become an option seller you may need a little bit lesser skill but to become an option buyer you need a bit higher skill so it's always uh, better that you put uh, okay what is swing trading so rishikesh swing trade is nothing but you uh, go behind a stock for example i would give you an example uh, so this is a broker terminal or this is where you can see your charts see the charts of companies so i go into um, the same sbi okay so i check into the stock i understand that uh, maybe at this point of time this point of time the stock is going down because of any reasons and the stock has gone down and the stock is currently at this price nearly 553 rupees and i feel that the stock is now at a bottom and it's at a good price to buy so in trading what we the basic fundamental of trading is that buy low sell high buy at a lower price and sell at a higher price so you understand that stock is now at a lower price you buy it at 550 rupees and uh, when it reaches 562 or 570 or 5 any any price you sell it so swing trading is nothing but you put a, you put your money into a stock and hold the stock for maybe certain days or certain weeks that is called swing trading and after that you pull out the money and you put your money into a different stock so like that uh, it varies so swing trading is nothing but where you put your money for a, uh, a certain number of days or weeks so intraday trading is where you invest your money for uh, you, you you buy a stock uh, in the morning and then you sell the stock the same day and that is called intraday trading when it comes to swing trading you buy a stock today you hold it for a certain number of days or weeks and then you sell it for profit or loss and then there is something called long term investment so if you hold a stock for more than a year or more than 3 years that is called long term investment okay uh, what is your current take on cryptocurrency the government has added many regulations and taxes so the, the, the my take on crypto is that uh, crypto may win or may lose i don't know that 
so i always keep maybe i keep 5% to 5 to 10% of my uh, capital or, or the amount that i keep for investment for such risky assets so crypto penny stocks or uh, option buying all that is uh, all that is considered as risky assets or risky category so i always keep set aside 5 to 10% of my capital for such risky assets and i put that money there so even if i lose that that amount completely i would just lose 5% of 10% of my capital and i am okay with that Uh, and moreover if i get some uh, returns and it would be huge returns because since i am risking a lot of uh, i am taking a lot of risk my rewards would also be high so i might get 100% returns or 200% returns so that would be say i am just investing say if i if my capital is uh, 1 lakh rupees i am just investing 5000 rupees for such risky assets and then uh, since i am just putting 5000 rupees i might get 10000 or 15000 back which is nearly 10 to 15% of my capital so uh, that is my take on cryptocurrency i would, i am just invested uh, a certain percentage hardly 5 to 10% of my capital which i i have kept for risking so that is my take on that by the way the market feed app is great oh so uh, the app that you see uh, i would love to explain that as well so what we feel is uh, you have a lot of people out here saying that i don't know how to invest i don't know how to select stocks i don't know how to understand the stock market so uh, the app is for such people like that what we have done is we have onboarded uh, highly profitable traders so profitable traders in the sense they make a lot of money every month uh, and they are consistent also so they are highly profitable traders and they are verified traders what uh, we have done is we have curated a list of such traders and we have onboarded them so whenever they take a take, take a trade uh, they trade would be posted on the app you can just check the trade and you can take the trade when they make the money you can make similar returns it's just like copy trading so that is the first step now and the app that you see is just the first version of that within the next 3 months we would be coming up with a lot of features wherein when the trader takes a trade you would have a button saying place trade and when you click on that button the trade would be posted so we are coming with up with a lot of options there and uh, we are betting high on the app so if you have any other questions you can ask yes can you please share your youtube channel name again okay so it's market feed you can go to google i'll show you uh you can go to google search for market feed and you would see this market feed by sharik samsun and sharik samsun is our ceo so uh we have a complete mutual fund series <coughs> sorry not mutual fund series a stock market series so we call that stock market a to z so uh you can start watching those videos it is complete it is in uh, english only you can start watching those videos it would teach you right from the basics of what is stock market to the advanced futures and options so uh videos will be out every tuesday thursday and saturday you can start watching that okay i feel out uh, feel out of a collective savings 50% on equity 30% in sip and uh, mutual funds and 10% in gold bonds and 10% real estate or see having an mnc fund or else that is other what's your views okay so this is uh, the option that you have said uh, that daksha said this is a great option uh, i would uh, this is a good option and if you ask me what is my strategy what i do is i am a person who loves to take risk so i won't invest in gold bonds i won't invest in real uh, i won't invest in such uh, safe assets i am not interested in putting my money into fd putting my money into bonds gold gold all that because it's all safe haven i know that i would anyway be making money so since i am just i am at an, at my early stage i am ready to uh, make money or i am ready to take risk so what i do is i i am uh, i put maybe uh, i have put nearly 80 to 90% of my capital into stocks and mutual funds and just 10% into safe assets just because if i need if i have some requirement for capital i need to i should be always have the capital ready to take at any point of time so i put nearly 10% of my strategy is that i put just 10% 10% of my capital uh, into such fixed assets it can be fds i put into p2p lending platforms i put into fds uh and then the rest 90 80 to 90% i put into such risky assets only and what's your opinion on algo trading so uh i do algo trading i put nearly 70% of my trading capital into algo trading and the rest 30% i uh, trade myself so algo trading is a great option say especially we have engineers out here you are, might be computer science engineers you might be people who know coding well so if you know how to code and if you can, if you are interested in learning how markets work you can uh, you can figure out a trading strategy and then you can code out that strategy and keep it keep it uh, deploy it live on any software so what happens is when you do something you can focus on your job you can focus on your dreams all that uh, you would start getting money say the same thing what i said 
money would start making money for you so you can uh, go behind all this uh, so you can develop an algo strategy you can either develop an algo strategy or else you can uh, take an algo strategy which is always there in the market and then you can deploy that strategy you would anyway be making money but the main, main thing to be or uh, what you need to take care is that trading psychology that is a great thing so trading psychology emotions these are something that can be discussed for 3 hours 5 hours 10 hours all that so usually i don't take such one hour sessions my sessions used to last for uh, 8 hours and 10 hours because these things can't be explained in one hour even now i am i am not sure say uh, the people who had some basic idea about how markets work or uh, how these are would have understood all this but otherwise uh, you would not have got all this okay uh so that's all about thing do you have uh, any other questions anything else and uh this is my contact so uh, if you have any doubts regarding trading if you have any doubts regarding investment trading uh, stock markets uh, all these investment options uh, managing your personal finance tax filing all that you can contact me this is my personal mobile number and email id you can contact me at any time okay that was indeed a very informative session sir and looking forward to implement all your suggestions in real time before we end today's session we would like to share a small token of appreciation from itp bangalore section sec team thank you thank you so much sir for taking time and giving us this amazing webinar over finance it was enthralling and something to th truly ponder upon with this we would now like to conclude today's event thank you to all the participants who joined us today and looking forward to see you all in future iip day celebrations